tonight on the Friday free game feature, we have Submachine Universe. It is a point and click adventure. It's a pretty small bathroom. Wait, the toilet is all the way down there? Like, to wash your hands, you've got to climb a ladder. That's got to be one filthy ladder. I need to wash my hands again. Ooh, what is this thing? Looks like Bender. Ooh, what happened? And this looks like a Masonic symbol? Are we playing the secret world again? Root submachines. The first was established in 1904 by an unnamed scientist. Whereas the root was clearly maintained by humans. Such human-based system is no longer necessary in the edge. The AI has grown weary of humans and has started and has tried to eradicate any human who enters it using the fence system. That doesn't sound good. All right, let's read this. Reasons unknown, the submachine net seems to gone out of control, growing and tapping into more dimensions constantly. If left unchecked, submachines could fill every corner of void between dimensions, forcibly destroying dimensional barriers and warping physical reality to unnatural states of existence. However unlikely, the machine may have a will of its own, and seems to positively delight in the death of the explorers. I may soon join them. The reason for that may have something to do with the waveform collapse and possibility of wormhole being opened, even for a short time. If that happened, it's possible that some sort of entity passed through and is manifested within the submachine itself, although it is unlikely that the entity understands us, but perceives us as threats. Well, that just got a whole new level of creepy. A bricked off room. Whee! Do we use the crimson key here? We did, and there's a zero, zero. One, minus one, zero. And it's two, zero. Minus three, zero. Oh. I don't think we want to keep going forever. In 1904, the Root, built an underground cavern, was once a subterranean research base. By 1943, it, just before its downfall, an unnamed scientist was investigating on how to create a world-making computer program submachine. However, there was one problem. What he had made was not practically practical use yet, so the scientist gave the program to Murtaugh for safekeeping. This is in 1943. In hopes that when the time came for its use, he would know what to do. The program at that time was nothing but a stack of punch cards and tape reels, but over time, Murr reverse engineered it into a CD and discovered that it was a computer game, of all things. So 1984, computers came to popularity. Murtaugh spent his off time at the lab playing the game. It seemed that the game did virtually create an entire world. One year later, when Murr almost completed the game and prepared to end his obsession, something went terribly wrong. Afraid for his life, Murr left the lab, ripped out, and broke the computer's keyboard on his way out, and drove back to his home in the lighthouse. Shame to what he did, Murtaugh bricked up his own entrance to the root, and never looked back. We've been there. If we can break through that door, we could get to the root. He also tinkered with his own karma to make the mechanical hand in his bedroom. We've seen the mechanical hand. As a side note, it's unknown why there is the same hand in the church. Oh, we were in the church. Burr was ready to make the jump. Even though he knew it was unstable, he used the portal. He landed at the loop and shocked to find that Murr was inside the exact thing he saw as the game he had. Finding his way out, continuing on through the series, it comes down to this. The game was created, and now we are in it. Strange. Chair. Chair fall down. Chair. Chair fall down. Wait a minute. Chair. Chair fall down. I'm seeing a pattern here. <laughs> it's messing with us. As per the viewer input, both spiritually and in terms of Unix, 
777 is a highly regarded number. Let's see what happens if we put that in. Oh, we went somewhere. Whole thing starts with karma arms, karmic portals. Some people have the power to draw karmic portals using their karmic arms. Almost sounds like uh, Doctor Strange with the uh, sling ring. So let's have a little fun real quick. Let's try 404. Oh, 404 took us somewhere. 404 has been found, ladies and gentlemen. What did we find? Subnet has seven layers. Basically, the layer system works a set of seven alternate parallel universes. Wow. This just got heavy, Doc. Look at how they're exactly the same, but they're different stuff. Yeah, it's his layer. Holy cow, there's three freaking wisdom gems here. Say I could function on any object as long as the object had some kind of computer system itself. If the object did not have a computer system, the AI could build one by sending a message back in time and commanding a group of subbots to alter the object so it would be computerized when it was created. Submachine Universe. So my thoughts on this game, it's a puzzle game, that's for sure. Uh, reminds me a lot of mist in a way you mix conspiracy theory computer science uh ancient legends and all kinds of stuff are kind of mishmashed into this game as subject matter you're playing a game but in playing the game you're actually exploring the universe uh, very very meta slash fourth wall kind of uh ideas uh very big very grand ideas uh, like I said, it reminds me of very much of Mist, almost like a 2D flash version of Mist. Really makes you think. Lots of interesting puzzles, but I guess there's other submachine. There's a whole series of submachine games. You really want to uh, experience more of these. But yeah, interesting introduction. That's for sure. Submachine universe.